Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for this guide on how to set up a pig farm in Farming Simulator 22. Let's get into it. Alright, so first thing we need to do is we need to start a new game. So we're going to grab an empty slot here. We're going to start in new farm mode and we're going to start on Elm Creek. Got a list of mods here, so if you've got some mods you can leave them installed. Uh, but let's get into it. So we are going to be focusing on using base game equipment. Uh, and we'll focus on mods potentially later on in the tutorial. But for now, base game straight out of the box how you how you would experience it loading in for the first time and that's what we're going to work with all right that's loaded so let's jump in so character customization we're just going to go with our standard dude all right so we're going to skip the tutorial okay so if this is the first time loading in you can do the tutorial highly recommend that you do that uh, but for our purposes we are just gonna hook straight in so we're going to jump into the combine we're going to attach the header and we're going to hire a worker straight up to harvest this wheat. So we're going to keep this wheat um, and potentially use it for feed for the pigs or we're going to sell it. So while he's doing that, we are going to come over and build a pig barn. So we want to go into animals, come into pigs. Now, what have we got? We've got the pig pasture, we've got the pig sty. Actually, first thing we need to do is we need to inject some cash. So what we're going to do, come into the finances screen and we're going to borrow the maximum loan of 500000 So I'm going to add this money in. Okay, cool. So the money's added. So we've got 500000 So that'll bring us up to five ninety nine dollars uh, in cash. And what we're going to do is, so we're going to go back to the build menu, animals. Uh, we're going into pigs. And I think what we will do is... It's really going to be a toss-up between the the small pig sty for 108 pigs or the larger with uh, 270 pigs. So I think what we'll do is we will go this one because there's a couple of benefits to having this set up, which I'll allude to later on. Now we've just got to figure out an optimal position uh, for this guy. What I'm actually thinking is we'll put him in the corner here in line with the field and we'll keep our feed point which is over to my right so you can see the little icon with the trailer dumping that's where the food goes in then we've got a slurry point on this side and then we've got the animal dealer icon the paw print which is a bit hard to see with the zooming next to the next to the food point so we'll have a closer look once we place this okay so we're just going to toggle snapping on at it just in line with the, use the field here we've got as a guide to place it okay and then we're down so okay so we're $164,000 in cost already which is fine but we'll we'll recoup that very quickly okay food point animal dealer point so this is where you go in and buy your animals now uh, the pigs will live in here and then we have a slurry point which we can use for fertilizer and uh, also for sale on certain maps. I don't think Elm Creek you can sell it, but we'll cover off how we're going to use that slurry as well. And then we've got a bit of area here that we can utilize for other things. Okay, so next thing we're going to place is one solar panel. So what I'm going to do is grab this guy and I'm going to hook up that, that there. I'm just going to move him out the way momentarily because we are going to plant something but I just want to double check what we're actually going to plant first okay back into the build mode into productions and we're going to go income generators and a solar panel so the reason why we're putting some solar panels in so we are going to go two here so let's go one there and one there so that's going to give us a passive income of about 3000 per panel per month over the course of 12 months. And because the way the pigs operate is the reproduction cycle is uh, very quick. Basically the product of pigs, the way you make money from pigs is by selling more pigs. So as they reproduce, um, you sell them off uh, at the optimal price. And that's how you make money. So what we're going to do is we're going to go grab some pig feed. Now... There's a couple of ways you can feed pigs, but I've found and I recommend pig feed to be um, the most optimal. So I'll send this guy over to the shop 
on a worker. So if you're not familiar with where the shop is, main farm down here on Elm Creek, shop is just here. So this guy is now driving there automatically using the, the worker menu. Okay, this guy's got some wheat. This guy we will connect and connect. And we'll just move him out the way for the moment. So this is our cultivator for the field. Now let's go and buy some pigs. Now, a couple of ways you can buy pigs. Well, there's two, two main ways. There's this point here, right? Which we can come into this menu and buy them. Or we can buy them directly from the animal dealer, which is up here. But we can transport them as well. We're not going to worry about the transport for now. We're just going to buy. Um, what I'm going to do is potentially, so what I want to consider is the Flegel Noah TTW140 will carry 13 pigs. So what I'm planning to potentially do is lease this trailer when the pigs are ready to sell. And then we're going to sell them in batches of 13 because this is what the trailer carries. Okay. And then what they'll do is they'll reproduce in batches of 13 over time and you'll start to see how we build the farm out. So we're going to start with 13 pigs. Now you have two options. You can go for the cheaper option, which is the... So actually, before we talk about that, there's three breeds. So German Landrace, Benthone, Black Pied and Berkshire. They all function the same way. It's just cosmetic differences. You have two choices in our age group. So you've got zero month, which we're looking at here. Um, so it doesn't reach puberty until six months or you can buy mature pigs that are already six months old and they'll start reproducing straight away and the gestation period is four months okay so they're about double the price but for our purposes so we're going to go 13 so we're just going to start with 13 and then we're not going to buy any more pigs after this so this is going to be this is going to be the only lot of pigs that we buy uh, 650 transport fee to get them to the farm uh, which is fine there we go we've now got some pigs in there all right now if we go back to our animal menu you can see here we've got our 13 pigs and we've got all the various feed types so we've got base food grain and protein okay so pigs can be fed corn wheat barley canola sunflowers soybeans potatoes sorghum and sugar beets additionally they require water uh, this animal has reached its breeding age and animals that are healthy and older than six months can reproduce. Now, what we're going to do primarily to start with, so this guy is all done, so let's get him unloaded. We're going to focus on utilizing pig feed, uh, pig food, sorry, from the shop to feed our pigs. And there's a couple of reasons for that, which I'll explain shortly. Actually, what we'll do, before we do anything else, we're going to go cultivate our newly harvested wheat. So we're just going to hire a worker for that purpose. I'm going to jump back in this guy. I'm going to dump this wheat off in the silo. Now you can feed this directly to the pigs, but I don't recommend that, and I'll explain why. All right, so that's unloaded. So let's get him moved out of the way for the moment. Yeah, so you could feed that to the pigs, but what I recommend is you don't do that because of what I'm about to explain. So he's cultivating. He's on task waiting. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy... Uh, we're going to buy pig food from the shop. Okay, so if you come into Big Bag Pallets, scroll on over to Pig Feed. So you got Big Bag, uh, so Pig Food Pallets for one thousand dollars. Okay, so we're going to buy eight of those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to feed this to the pigs. So what we're going to do is pull up alongside our pig feed, and this should automatically start loading. Now you have to load one at a time. Alright, so we've got our pig food loaded, so let's head back to the farm. So I'm going to get this guy onto the road, and then I'll send him off on a worker. So open our worker menu with circle, and then we'll just send him back to just outside the front of the farm there. Alright, so he's cultivating, and this guy is ready to seed, so the only thing that we can plant right now is canola based on the crop calendar. So we are going to plant the canola. So we'll just make sure the solar panel is not going to get in the way. We should be fine. Now obviously I would have done this uh, while I was doing the other jobs, but I just wanted to wait and double check a few other things. But now we're underway, okay? Okay. 
All right, let's dismiss the worker and take over. So this pig food basically contains all the um, different varieties of food for the pigs. So they'll eat four different types or four categories of food. So the feeding is quite complex, especially for a new player if you're new to the series. And you need to give them the correct ratio of, of feed for optimal results. So pig feed is by far the easiest and best way to ensure you get the correct feed type. So let's, let's dump this in. Now as that's going in, we can observe the food increasing. So you can see our total capacity is 2,400 litres. We're getting 12, 2,000 litres of base food. And it's getting portioned out to meet the correct um, requirements for the pigs. So if we go into the help menu quickly, we can have a little bit more of a look at it. So to ma maintain the health of your pigs and therefore their ability to reproduce, you need to provide them with the right mix of feed. You just unload the pig food for each crop in the unloading area for the pigsty. So they need base food, grains and protein. So they need those three minimum. Root crops you can omit, all right, but you do need base, grain and protein. Now you can't give them all base, you can't give them all grains, and you can't give them all protein. You have to give them the right mix. So if you mess, essentially what happens is if you mess up uh, the mix, the, their productivity will go right down and they won't reproduce at the rate that you need them. So initially, that's why it is a very good idea to utilize the pig feed for that purpose. All right, so I'm gonna send this guy back to the shop, grab another load of pig feed. So hopefully they'll be able to navigate it. We've got our cultivation happening, we've got our seeding happening, and this guy is heading back to the farm. So let's go and buy some big bags this time. So the big bag pig food, no, it's just, I'll just double check that this actually works on the auto load. So I'll buy one just as a tester. I'm pretty sure it does. It's slightly cheaper for the same amount of food. So just something to keep in mind. But we do know that the tried and true big bag pallets, which are these ones here, don't have any issues. So you want to get the pig food, we're just going to buy eight again. Now yeah, we're, we're all good. Right, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to pop in another solar panel. Now the reason why I like the solar panels, so we're coming into generators. Now because with the pigs, with the pigs and with the growing of crops in particular, basically what you'll notice is that it does take a fair bit of time for crops to grow and for animals to reproduce. So you're going to be skipping ahead a month at a time. Now, if you don't have any income generators in between harvesting, you basically, you have no cash flow. So having these guys on the farm will give us, you know, three grand, six grand, nine grand per month on average. So it just keeps our finances ticking over. And then after two years, uh, they'll be paid off in game and then they'll start making a profit. So you'll basically start to see, once we start accelerating our sleeping through the months, there we go. So it does, does take the big bags, no problem. Now the only downside with doing it this way is you have to reload every one of these manually. So it does get a little bit time consuming, especially as the pigs start to grow in number because obviously more pigs require more feed. So yeah, just touching on the solar panels again. So obviously they're gonna be keeping us uh, afloat while we skip through, through months. Um, and then the plan will be to build out our own supply of pig feed ingredients. So particularly uh, if we look at it again, yeah, particularly sorghum, wheat, and probably soybeans. So they're going to be soybeans or canola. They're going to be our go-to crops to create our own pig feed mix. All right. All right. Let's grab a little bit more. Okay, so while he's loading, our cultivation is done. So let's get him moved over. So just park him up sort of out of the way. All right. So that's going in the canola. So we can use the canola for feed as well. So we might, we're going to utilize what we've got on hand, but this is basically, it's a bit of a slow burn with the pigs initially until they start to turn a profit. But it is, it is doable at the early stages to make it work. Um, and this is one way that you can do it. So let's head back to the farm, get this unloaded. And then we're going to finish our cropping. When I say cropping, we're talking about our seeding and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you back at the farm. Right, here we are back at the farm. So one thing we've got to be mindful of is not to drive on the crop. So we do have crop destruction turned on uh, by default. 
So if we drive on planted fields when the crop is visible, uh, we're going to get crop destruction. So you can turn that off in the settings if you don't want to play with that on. Okay, let's get this unloaded. All right, feeds in. Let's check in on our feed quantity. So we've got quite a large capacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep filling, filling this guy up. So let's head back for another load. So it is a little bit of initial, in, like a pretty hefty initial investment. Okay, but it'll it'll pay off uh, in the long run. Okay, let's go back and get some more food. All right, so our canola is planted. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip ahead to next month, shortly, and we're going to plant uh, wheat, which I think is available to plant in September. So let's park him up here. All right, I've got some pig food here ready to go. So I've got a couple of batches of big bags. So let's get these guys refilled. Once again, refilling one by one, which is a little bit of a pain. It does take a while. So the only pain with this is having to do it one by one, but we'll get that done and then we'll come back in. All right, fully loaded. Let's head back to the farm, drop this off at the pig barn, and then we're going to sleep and move into September. So I'll see you guys back at the farm. All right, here we are back at the farm. Let's go get this unloaded. And just be careful not to drive on our newly planted field. So you can see now our health of our pigs has started to come up. So after a full 24-hour 24, 24 cycle of feeding, or a full day of feeding, they will um, come up to 100% health. And we've already got some slurry. Now straw, we haven't added any straw. Straw is required to get manure. But for our purposes, we're not going to worry about the manure for now. So what we are going to do is we're just going to go to sleep. So let's go and do that. All right, here we are. So 7,774 in property income. So that's from our solar panels. So if we just go check our profit and loss for yesterday. So we can see in August we spent 485,000. So that's on new pigs, on construction costs for the building, the solar panels, uh, property maintenance. So the, the buildings do cost some money over time couple of uh, incendiary expenses and 38,000 on pig food which I think is the misc category and then today in September we've made 3,340 from our solar panels so you can start to see the solar panels are going to be where we um, start clawing back some of that income now we've got weeds in this field which is fine we're going to sort that out at, at another stage now canola's also got weeds so we need to run this through with a weeder otherwise we'll get, otherwise we'll get a yield deficit but we're not going to worry about that for now because our primary focus is on the pigs. So let's go and have a look at them. All right, so here we are. So we've got our 13 Berkshires. They are full health, quarter of the, quarter of the way through their reproduction cycle. Okay. Our food is pretty comfortable for now. But obviously we, we, want, to, we want to keep co uh, co uh, topping that up as best we can. And they're seven months old. So we are all good there for now. What I'm going to do is I'm sending this guy back on a worker. Back to the shop, open AI worker menu, pop him down there. Uh, what we might do is we, yeah, we will do a run of we will do a run of um, wheat, I think. So this guy, he's stuck. Let's try this again. So I think because that guy was parked in the way. So we'll get this guy onto the road and then we'll move on. Now you can turn off weeds, but I'm not gonna worry about turning them off just for this first harvest. Just because I want to show you guys what we can do. And the wheat and the seeds and the wheat and the canola are not really key to this strategy to begin with because we're more focused on the pig food so let's get this guy underway and today we can plant wheat barley canola poplar grass yeah so let's go some let's go some wheat because the wheat we can just sell directly and we've already got some wheat from a previous harvest so that's not too bad so we might as well utilize these fields while we've got them Another good option is grass, okay, so if you want to just put grass in here and then do grass silage or hay bales or something else, but for our purposes, if we want to try and build up our own stockpile of, of pig feed, that's probably what we want to do now uh, with a view to um, phasing out our own pig food eventually. Now there are mods that you can get that will take care of the pig food for you, so you can buy it directly from a, um, a container on the map which we'll demonstrate a little bit later on but I just want to show you guys potentially how you can get started with pigs profitably without having to use mods or cheats or any other exploits uh, but the mods do uh, make life a little bit easier 
for starting a pig farm so we'll come to that especially if you're a new player you might be unf unfamiliar with mods so we'll show you this way first and then some alternative ways towards the end all right let's get the, get this filled up and then we'll head back to the farm now filling it this way is not so bad when you do have only 13 pigs but when you've got 270 which we will potentially have in that big barn eventually the feeding does get a little bit out of control so something to be aware of all right let's head back to the farm and we'll get this underway all right here we are back at the farm let's go and grab now we can drive on this part of the field because it's only weeds and it's been cultivated so it's not going to impact it we want to stay off of our newly seeded area just just as a good practice i mean the crop destruction penalty only really kicks in once you reach a certain stage of growth but i just i just tend to drive off the field uh, as much as possible just so i remember to all right let's get this dumped let's have a look at our food okay so we're pretty comfortable on the food count so we'll, we'll probably do one more load while we're seeding this other field and then we'll come back in once that's completed now the other thing to do is you can manually seed so this is what i'm doing now so i'm just doing the seeding uh, instead of the worker so i'm just going to put in a ridge marker so what a ridge marker does is it just shows us where we need to drive for the next run it's a little bit hard to see here on this field and it looks like we have missed a bit so the only challenge is with when you do the manual seeding yourself there is a risk that you'll miss bits here and there but as long as you line up your run correctly so i'm just going to do a bit of a headland here and that's the beauty of this game you can just sort of do the jobs that you want to do and then outsource, outsource to the worker what you don't want to do so let's go and hire the worker here check in on this guy yep perfect timing and to be fair the worker was probably doing a better job of that seeding than i was because the ones that i the, when i do my own seeding i use a much bigger seeder uh, just to make life that little bit easier all right so let's get this filled and then we'll head back head back over all right full with another load let's head on back all right so we're back at the farm let's get this unloaded so you got to stay in the vehicle for the unloading so we'll get this we'll get this unloaded and then we'll go check in on our seating all right job done okay let's get this guy back to the shop in preparation for our next run of feed so that can happen while we're doing other jobs okay the wheat has been planted and our canola is on the go so we'll let our worker go past so basically there's nothing left for us to do currently so let's just go and inspect the field so we've got stones we've got weeds needs lime and needs rolling so they're things you don't need to worry about at the early stage they're just going to reduce our yield of our crops okay but because we're focusing on the pigs they're our priority and the arable farming is uh secondary to that okay okay let's go ahead and sleep so now we'll get some money from our solar panels now we are moving into winter so there's going to be a reduced output from those solar panels um, during the winter months because there's obviously less daylight so as we hit spring, summer, autumn, it's going to be back to a sustained level. All right, 12 grand income, 1,666 loan cost. And let's check out what we're going. So let's we'll jump into the crop calendar quickly. All right, so they're not going to be due to harvest until next year. Okay, so now we've got basically almost six months or six to 12 months of just feeding the pigs and going through that cycle. So let's check out how the pigs are traveling. Okay, 38,000. So they're about to reproduce shortly. Another two months and they'll be, we'll have a new batch of 13. So let's go grab some more pig feed. So you can start to see the gameplay loop here is basically just getting a lot of pig feed for the pigs. Okay, while that's happening, let's grab another batch of three of these. So we're gonna go eight at a time. Cool, base price 900 plus, yeah righto. So there's three more loads of pig feed. So if we look at how much, we're about halfway full. So four more loads should do it. Um, and they're not really they're not really eating that much because the volume is low. But what we want to do is we just want to want to try and sustain these guys as much as possible while that's happening. So I'm going to load these up and then we'll come back in. All right, cool. Another load ready to go. So let's send this guy back on a worker. Okay, let's check in on everything else. Now, look, if you really wanted to, you could do the weeding um here at this stage but i want to keep my costs low or not let's go and see how much a weeder is actually 
because like I keep saying, weed weeding is something you can turn off, not, and it's not a lot. Of, it's not something a lot of people play with on. But just to explain, if I can find where it is, weed is here. We go. So based on based on the size of the weed depends on the size of the weeder. So some of these will do small to medium. Uh, if you do have large, the only way you can get them out is with sprayers. So chemical sprayers, which are these guys here, but you do get a yield deficit if you do that. So that's why I tend not to worry about it because it's just as easy to turn the weeds off. You don't have to worry about it. But the purpose of this tutorial, like I keep saying, is just to build out our infrastructure initially for the pigs and then to move to our own arable farming crops later so we are just sort of we're planting what we can plant with a low cost low cost strategy uh, and we know that we're going to get a reduced yield but our primary purpose our primary food focus is just the pig food at this stage we'll get this dropped off send him back on a worker yeah, so while it's happening, we'll go and sleep. So we're coming into winter now. There's not a there's not a whole lot we can do. So our crops will continue to grow. Okay, eleven thousand property income. So we can see our wheat is growing. So if we come into the crop crop map, we can see what stage they're at in growth over here. And obviously the crop calendar will tell us when we can harvest. We're a long way off harvesting which is fine. Okay, let's check in, check in on the pig feed. So 45,000, so doing pretty well. Okay, so next month, we're gonna get our first batch of offspring. So let's go ahead and sleep. All right, 7,000 property income. So coming into December, we're gonna get reduced. Uh, we're gonna get reduced output from our solar panels, but still gonna keep the school board ticking over. Okay, food's down a little bit. And now here we go, we've got our first batch of zero month uh, pigs. So what they'll do is obviously they've been they've just been born. After six months, they will start reproducing, and then these guys will reproduce in 14 months. And you can see how it's gonna, we're going to start to get the exponential growth happening uh, with these pigs. So we're in December. Let's just go and check in in our, our finances quickly. So we are five thousand profit for November and eight thousand for December. So it's just keeping the keeping the cash getting the cash topped up with the solar panels because obviously we're not really making any money yet so we just need to sustain ourselves so that when the time comes for us to sell the pigs we're in a position where we can uh, be profitable okay check in on our worker yep so he's here all right so we'll just go and check in on the pigs quickly so they're still not eating a huge amount which is good all right uh, our slurry is getting up there. I mean, when I say getting up there, it's it's gradually increasing. 16 months for 16% puberty, so that's that correlates to the six month time frame. How are we going with our crop calendar? So we're in January. Not much we can do there. So we'll load this guy up. We'll head back to the farm and we'll sleep for another day. So I'll see you once I've got this loaded. All right, this guy's on the way back to the farm. So once he's back, we'll get get what we need unloaded and we'll sleep through till February all right here we are back at the farm let's go and unload now crop destruction should be active here so we want to make sure we don't drive on the crop here now the total capacity effectiveness bar basically has three colors so it's like a traffic light system so it'll go yellow when it's getting low red when it's really low green when it's good so just at a, at a glance you'll be able to see what's happening so let's send this guy back on a worker let's head back to the farm house and sleep again get us into february let's make sure our tractor made it out yes he has okay cool so our solar panels are starting to come back up in their revenue so let's check our finance screen so november we made five grand december we made four grand january five grand and february say fifteen hundred so you can still, we're still maintaining our cash, but we're not, we're not actually making heaps of money because the pigs are a bit of a slow burn. But in two more months, we're going to get another 13. Um, and then we're really going to start seeing that exponential growth, particularly when this next cohort comes in. 
Yeah, it's got, it's, we'll get this guy back to the farm shop for another load of pig feed. Now another thing I would mention too is if you were getting annoyed with having to do so many trips back and forth, you can get a bigger trailer. But obviously we're just utilising what we've got in new, part, new farmer mode. Uh, but we will look to expand the operation when we get some cash. So I'm just going to load these up like we, like we have been. And then we'll go drop them off and we'll go from there. So see you in a couple of minutes. All right, another load ready to go. Let's head back to the farm. All right, here we are back again. Another load going in. So this will take us up to about 58,000 litres, roughly speaking. Cool. All right. Actually, what I'll do, send this guy back on a worker just so he's there ready for the next load. So it's basically just allowing us to do two things at once. And you can have six workers running at any one time. So as your farm operation expands, um, it gets busier and busier. Okay, 8,000 property income. Let's check in on our finances. So yeah, small profit each month, which is great crops are doing as well as they can be obviously we're not looking after them 100 percent for reasons we've already talked about let's talk let's have a look at crop growth or crop calendar so what are we? we're looking for canola so that's going to be september and yeah so we're one two three four five months away okay check on the pig food situation so next month we're going to get another batch of 13 which is good all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sleep again because there's nothing we can do today. Now, obviously there are contracts you can do. So if you're familiar with contracts, you can look to do contracts in between um, the day, the months. I tend not to worry about contracts initially because it takes you away, unless that's what you want to do. It takes you away from your own farming operation and it slows down the gameplay loop a little bit. Because we're focused on the pigs, that's basically our focus. All right, cool. So our feed is still looking pretty good. So they're eating about two grand, uh, 2,000 liters per day which is not too bad. And we've just got another batch of 13 uh, born. Now we've got our second batch of pigs that were born first. They're nearly ready to be mature and start producing. And these are our OG pigs, 14 months old. So these are the, gonna be the ones we look to sell potentially first, um, once we get the barn to capacity. And I think 24 months is where they reach their peak price. Okay, so where is this guy? Cool, all right, let's, gra let's grab some more some more pig feed so 28,000 in feed all right i'm gonna get this loaded up and then we'll head back to the farm all right fully loaded let's head back all right back again same old song and dance let's get these guys fed now pigs are a little bit repetitive as you can tell okay but this is the reality reality of becoming a pig farmer as a beginner using what we have in the base game because it's just not plausible to run a large profitable pig enterprise early game without doing some strategies like this particularly with seasons on so if you turned off seasons turned off um, weeds and plowing and stuff you'd probably be able to stockpile your own feed but it would take a little bit of extra time but this is just this is just how i would do it if i was a new player all right let's go get let's go sleep sleep till march and then we'll come back in and we should have another batch of 13 pigs. All right, 12,000 property income. Let's check our finances like we normally do. So 18,000 down because we bought a whole bunch of feed, which was to be expected. Um, pigs themselves. So one more month and then we'll get the next batch. And we are... Yeah, this guy's just about ready to get to the shop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep again, speed this up a little bit. So that'll bring us into April. Okay, 13,000 property income. Let's check our, oh, so use vehicle sales. So we'll cover that in a different video, but we're focusing on base game equipment at the moment. So we should have, okay, do I miss something here? I would have thought we'd have another batch of pigs, two months, unless that's these guys. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, he's ready, he's poised, ready to pick up some food. Uh, let's go. Two more months until we can get into canola harvest so let's skip through till let's skip through till august so we can harvest our canola and then while we're harvesting the canola we'll load up on the pig feed just to utilize the worker so we've got you know workers doing multiple things rather than rather than carrying the uh, feed back the pig feed back unnecessarily okay fifteen thousand. this is ready to harvest which is uh where are we wheat oh yeah july okay 
so sometimes I find this crop calendar a little bit hard to read with the green and red uh, the green and orange bars so that's good for us so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do this time is disable the straw swath so I don't want to drop the straw now if I was doing arable farming as a focus what I would do is I would collect collect the straw and bale it or pick it up with the loading wagon but because we're focusing on the pigs primarily at this stage I'm not worried about the straw so that's that's with the straw swath disabled right there. Now let's go check out canola because that to me looks like it's potentially ready as well. So the wheat and the canola are ready at the same time. So if I look at, yeah, just underneath that line, we are all sweet. Okay, check on the pigs. Cool, so we'll get another batch of 13 hopefully next month. Let's go and load up on, well, one thing I will mention, if you've got crop destruction turned off but you've got a worker operating your machinery, they're not going to destroy the crop, which you can see is happening right there. All right, let's get some pig feed loaded up. So the name of the game with this strategy is just to keep the pigs, the pig feed continually topped up. So we don't ever run into a situation where we're very low. We're always maintaining a high level of pig feed. So I'll get these loaded and we'll head on back. All right, fully loaded. Let's head on back, drop this off into the barn. And then we'll check in on how our harvest is traveling. Alright, here we are back at the farm. Let's get this uh, dropped off. Okay, excellent. Okay, send him back on a worker to the shop. Okay, let's check in on our harvester. So we're getting a pretty pretty low yield here, which is to be expected. So I think what we'll probably look to do is we will start to look after these fields a little bit more properly. So what we're going to do is get this field cultivated in preparation for seeding straight away. So we've got multiple jobs on the go. So if we get this cultivated, now our seeding can happen for canola next month. Yep, and then we're just going to basically repeat the process. All right, so we've got our wheat harvest under underway. We've got our cultivation happening, and we've got the canolas ready to harvest as well. And we've got our other worker. Actually, I'll get this guy out the way. And yeah, we've got our other worker situated to pick up some more feed, so let's do that quickly. All right, this harvest is done, so let's drop this wheat off. So we're gonna, we're gonna store this in the silo, and then we're gonna go straight into harvesting that canola, and then we're gonna reseed our wheat field, and we're gonna continue the farming loop, and then we'll sleep once everything's planted, and then we'll move to the next day. So let's get this unloaded just in here. Okay, let's double check our crop calendar. So harvesting season for wheat and canola, so we can plant canola next month, and we can plant wheat in September. Okay, so that gives us plenty of time to do what we need to. Okay, let's get this on. Let's get this guy on task for the canola harvest straight up. So we're just going to send this guy off on a worker straight away. And we've got another load of pig food um, arrived on the farm, so let's go and get this unloaded. So obviously we're just going to stock up our pig food, get it to maximum fill level, and then we're going to try and maintain that as best we can. So the plan is to phase out the pig feed, which we've already talked about at length. Now one other thing is, so we're going to have three crop types. So what I'm thinking is the next purchase is going to be probably field 49. So it's only 50 grand, which we could probably purchase now, to be honest. So let's go ahead and do that. And then that's going to, that's going to be our... So let's go and see what it's got, actually. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. It could be sugar beet or something. Let's go and check the... Go and inspect the field. So to make the three core um, ingredients for pig food... Cotton. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to cultivate that straight in. And we are going to... So we're going to have our base food, we're going to have our protein. So base food, grain, and protein. So if I just jump into the help menu to refresh my memory. Yeah, so our base food is going to be sorghum, our grain is going to be wheat, and our protein is going to be soybeans or canola. So three fields, three different crop types. And then we're going to omit the potatoes and sugar beets uh, for now because they're not necessary for maximum productivity. Okay, this guy is in the way, naturally. So what I might do is I'm going to quickly rip in here and do a headland, lift the weight. What's going on here? Okay, is that lowered? Let's try this. It's problematic because we've got workers obviously working in close proximity to each other. Try this again. So I'll get this cultivated, cultivating happening and then we'll move on. All right, how's our canola harvest looking? So pretty low on the canola, really. So we're really going to have to start to look after these fields a little bit better to improve our yield. So we're going to look to do that once we get some pigs to sell. Um, all right, this guy can. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll plant our crops in September. So we'll just make sure we're all sorted and ready to go. 
Okay, this guy is going to go back to the shop in preparation for another load of pig feed. All right, hopefully he'll make it un uneventfully, which is probably not going to happen because everything's in the way. So let's get this guy onto the road and then we'll send him off. All right, cool. Now we're probably missing a fair bit of crop here, so let's... No, I've just destroyed some of it. Obviously the worker was in the field when I dismissed him, so you just got to be aware of that if you are going to dismiss a worker when they're in the middle of the field so the worker doesn't cause you the crop destruction penalty but if you take over over control in the middle of a crop then you're going to have issues all right let's try this again okay so this guy shouldn't have any issues now hopefully now one thing i want to look at is potentially getting some bigger implements so if we have a look at cultivators currently we've got the raby eg39 which is very very small uh, we could probably get up to about four meters yeah, four meters is going to be our maximum if we're using a, uh, a cultivator. A power harrow, we might be able to go a bit wider. Yeah, that's only four meters. Now, what about subsoiler? 130 horsepower, so about four meters. So, obviously, our tractor is a limiting factor at the moment. Uh, disc harrows, we can get five meters for 180, so a 190 horsepower tractor will tow that, no problem. That's 35 grand. Uh, what else we got? I mean, we could look at a spader, but they're quite expensive as well. So... I think we'll just push through with what, with what we've got currently. All right, let's get this canola dropped off and we'll get to cultivating. So obviously this is where you start to level up to when you get a little bit more efficiency in your equipment. So bigger harvesters, bigger tractors, bigger implements. What did take you a while initially becomes a lot quicker, which starts to increase the uh, sort of satisfaction you get from your farm. So it's just, um, it's a bit of a slow burn in the beginning. And particularly because we're trying to do this in a, legitimate, in a legitimate fashion uh, with no mods at this stage this is generally how you would go about it or at least how I would go about it so how are we going for crops so we've got 7,000 wheat 1,800 in canola which is not too bad considering we're not really looking after our fields correctly and then we've just purchased field 49 in preparation to put in some a third crop so to round out our pig food mix okay cool looking good now we can probably sleep actually so if we go into Yep, August, and then we'll go straight to September, because then we can we can get cracking on the planting that we need to do. Yep, so let's do that. Doesn't matter if the cultivation is incomplete, because we can we can continue that anyway. We might just get some weeds pop up, so we'll deal with those as well. Okay, eleven thousand in property income, not too bad. Okay, we will have some weeds, so small weeds. Okay, we're gonna just check on the pigs quickly. So we nearly maxed out on our feed, which is good. And it looks like we've had another batch of pigs born. So now we're up to four batches of 13. And it looks like we are about to get another batch again. And you can see our OG pigs getting close to the 24 month mark, which is their peak sale price. So happy days. All right, let's move on. Cool, 13,000 property income. Today is September. So this is going to be planting day. So let's grab our cedar. So actually, let's grab our cultivator, head over to the cotton field, and we'll get that cultivated. Now, obviously, cotton is not something we're focused on, so I'm happy to uh, get rid of this. And we will get a fertilization state for putting this into the ground, so let's, let's get that guy happening. Okay, let's get this guy underway. So we're just going to keep the rotation the same. Now, these weeds that we've got grown, they will disappear once we begin seeding. All right, while we're waiting, let's refill. All right, let's head back to the farm and get this unloaded. All right, one thing we are going to do is we're going to sell this lizard pickup. So we, we haven't used it. We're not going to use it. So I'm just going to drive this guy down to the shop and we're going to offload this for some cash. So probably would have been, probably would have been a good idea to do this earlier because we would have got more money for it um, the newer it was. But still, it's just a little bit of extra money. Oh, hang on to it. Because we're sort of skimming around that $100,000 mark, just makes sense to get rid of this now while we can and we're still going to get 21 grand for it so let's sell that now that realistically that could fund some bigger equipment so 180 horsepower i mean this could be the go how much is this to lease pretty cheap on the lease all right i think i might wait till we sell our first batch of pigs and then we're going to go we're going to go and sell some stuff i mean we're going to go and lease some extra stuff because that will not be very far away. So if we look at our pigs now, so this batch is getting ready to reproduce. No, sorry, this batch will be ready to reproduce. 
these guys aren't too far away from peak price, which I think is about 24 months. So we'll see that shortly. Uh, this guy's cultivating. So this is going to go. This is going to be our sorghum. So let's have a look when we can plant sorghum. So sorghum can be harvested now and planted in April. Okay, so that's going to spread out our planting schedule, uh, which is fine. A uh, bigger seed will probably wouldn't be a bad idea as well. So let's have a look. Or maybe even a second seeder, just to speed up our gameplay loop. So how much is this guy? 220 horsepower. Yeah, the seeders are quite expensive. Now oh, we could do this guy. 165,000. I've got the horse aggravation pack, which gives us a few options as well. Oh, th what have we got here? This is 3 meters, 3 meters. Alright, yeah, what we'll do is I'm going to persevere with these guys. So we'll let these guys do their thing. And then we'll come back in once we're ready to move on. Okay, while we're waiting for this field work to complete, we're going to go back to the shop and grab another load of pig feed. So we should be getting pretty close to having this. Yep, yeah, pretty much nearly maxed out, which is which is ideal. Okay, this is where we want to be. 20,000 litres of slurry, that's also a good position. Now, the other thing we could look to get is a slurry spreader. So this is going to give us free fertiliser. So if we look at uh, slurry tanks, so the one we want, or the one we would want would be this one. So this is the FarmTech SuperSys 800. And it's got a spreader on the back there. So that's going to improve our field yield and give us more crops. Uh, one thing we probably need to look at, and I think would be an okay investment right now, is a weeder. So they're quite cheap. So weeders pull out small growing weeds in between the crops. So this is a small weeder. It's got a 6 meter working width. Uh, how big is this one? 9 meters. So we could lease that. So let's lease that, I think. Now, obviously, you can turn weeds off. That's entirely up to you. But we're just going to play with this game straight out of the box like you would experience it if you were a brand new player. And we're just going to go through the full um, process. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to turn off weeds at some stage. I mean, a lot of people turn it off. It's just personal preference, but I just want to showcase kind of how you would have to do it if you kept the setting on. But that's the beauty of this game. You can sort of tailor it to your own preferences as you get more proficient. And you just focus in on more, focus more in on the jobs that you do want to do versus the ones that you don't. All right, another load ready. So let's go back and then we'll come back for this weeder without the trailer. So I'm going to get onto the road, send him back on a worker. Okay, happy days. Cultivation is going all right. So what I am going to do is I'll let this guy continue. So if we check out this field, we've got weeds growing, so it just needs a weeder. And that should bring up our yield bonus. And then we might grab that farm tech um, slurry trailer to get a fertilization bonus on our field as well. Because we are not far off having a first batch of pigs to sell. So we will, I think it's 24 months when they reach peak price. So we are about to find out. So we can drive across this field, it's just weeds. Not a problem at all. Okay, let's get this get this dropped off. Now this should this should max out our capacity. And then what we'll do is we'll leave the trailer here. Should get pretty close. Okay, great, cool. Okay, we'll go pick up our weeder. So head back to the shop. Okay, this guy is almost done. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna save this field here. So field 45, we'll save that for sorghum. And then we're gonna put in our canola which is this one in this field here so we've just rotated the crop around just because of the workflow there's no real other reason it's just because this field's cultivated and ready to go it makes sense that we'll utilize it okay let's double check where all sweet so we should get a pretty good yield out of here so our yield bonus is 97 uh, and it's 100 percent fertilized and this guy is stopped for some reason is he yeah, it's because this field is a bit of an odd shape. So let's just whip around and carry on. Oh, these front weights are so annoying sometimes. Lift weight. There we go. Now, if we send this guy on the 45, this should. No, it's not going to work. Now, because this field's not quite 45 degrees, it's a little bit problematic. Now, I'm getting stitched up by this front weight here. Let's try this again. All right, let's try it this way. See if we can get it on the 45. Okay, now that this should complete the rest of the field, hopefully. OK, 
Okay, this guy's overshot the shop again. No surprises there. Okay, let's hook on our, hook on our weeder. So it's got a decent working width here, so we should be able to get through what we need to relatively quickly. So that's the weeder. Obviously those tines pull out the small weeds. Alright, send this guy back to the farm on a worker. Okay, how are we going here? Hopefully this is not going to be taking forever. Canola is going in. Cool. And then our sorghum will go in in April or May. Okay, cool. Right, I'm going to skip ahead until these guys have completed their jobs and then we'll come back in. Alright, what I am going to do is I'm going to buy that bigger cultivator. Or I'm going to lease it at least. It's time for this guy to go. So we're going to drop the implement off at the shop. And I'm going to sell it. And then we're going to grab. So we're looking at one before. So if we're going to go into cultivators. We'll grab the Amazon. Or probably this guy. I think the lemkin, so that'll give us five meters of working width, and we've got a 190 horsepower tractor, which is perfectly fine. So what I'm looking to do here is just sort of speed up that harvesting efficiency. So obviously cultivating has taken a while, seeding has definitely taken a while. So a bigger a bigger working width seeder. I mean, if I really wanted to bite the bullet and get a directorial seeder, that would probably be the way to go. But I think the cost perspective right now is probably not something that I want to do, but that would definitely be this is worth eight grand. So let's sell that. Cool. All right, let's buy that one. Well, at least that one we were just talking about. So the Lemkin. Let's lease it. So it's still relatively cheap in terms of a lease, and we're going to be hanging on to it for probably another year cycle at least. But it is definitely going to speed up our cultivation that's for sure cool and we've got a front weight here so we should be all good for steering hopefully a little tad floaty but seems to be all right okay let's send this guy back to the farm all right our weeder is on site so let's unfold it and we'll get this we'll get this worker to do field 45 okay so what we should see is the weed the weed warning in light blue has now disappeared cool happy days all right, cultivator's not far off. Our cedar is about halfway done. Our weeder should be pretty quick on this one. And let's quickly check on the pigs. So we are, how are we up to now? We've got five groups, one, two, three, four, five. So we had 13, 13 in, in our initial investment. Our pig feed capacity is full up, is full. So we're all sorted. Okay, so let's get this unfolded. Now we're talking. A Little bit of improved, increased working width. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a headland row and then I'm going to rip, whip around, send it back on a worker just so we can navigate these solar panels no problem. Shouldn't be an issue but it's always just easier just to make it as, as easy as possible for the workers. Okay, working with definitely an improvement. Alright, nice. Alright, our weeding is complete on field 45 at least so let's head over to field 49. And because we've got the canola going in, I believe, so let's get that weeded straight away while we can. Because we basically should have, if I have it inspect the field, yeah, so we've got weeds growing straight away. So obviously they're not visible, but the needs weeding requirement will get resolved by carrying out this step. So let's just go ahead and do that. All right, cultivation is done on field 46 in preparation for the sorghum. So let's go drop this cultivator off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cruise back to the shop with this tractor. And I'm going to grab that slurry tank. And we're going to use that for fertilization. So that's going to boost our yield for maybe not all of our fields, but let's see how we go. Okay, we'll drop this and send this guy over. So he'll navigate over. Fields 40, so field, field 45 needs lime and rolling. 0% uh, fertilizer and we're getting a 35% yield bonus. So if we fertilize twice, we'll get, I believe, 50% each time, maybe 25% each time. I can't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I do it all the time, but it escapes me at the moment. Obviously this field has got weeds in it and this field over here has got a yield bonus of 95 because we ploughed in a crop of cotton. So that will give us a yield bonus if there's a crop already planted. Okay, this guy is almost done. So this field is a bit of a pain. So I should have remembered that from previous, previous episodes on my Let's Play. Field 40 is very difficult to work with the workers. 
Field 47 is actually probably a better candidate because it's more rectangular. So once we've planted 49, we're going to get the crop off it. And then we're going to switch to field 47 to just make life a little bit easier. Okay, let's go grab this slurry tank. Okay, so we want to come into slurry tanks. Farm tech super sys 800. And we're just going to go all standard. Lease that for 1000. The per day cost and the per hour cost are pretty low. But this is going to use, we're going to utilize the slurry that the pigs are producing uh, as a free fertilizer. So it is a, technically it is, there is a, is a cost involved. Obviously through the pig food and the maintenance of all the pigs and stuff. But it is, a, it is just a byproduct of having pigs. So we might as well utilize it. Because uh, fertilizer, if you purchase it, is quite expensive. Okay. All right, great. Seeding is completed. So let's get off the field. Head back to the farm in preparation for our next lot of jobs. I think we can cut through here. No, we can't. All right, let's try that again. All right, where's our slurry tanker? So let's go and get this guy filled up with some slurry. And we're going to fertilize our wheat field pretty much straight away. So the slurry point is on the opposite side of the pig barn. So if we come around through here, this is the one we want. So we'll start filling the tool. See the slurry going in. So 8,000 liters. Now what you want to do is, if you're going to utilize this with the worker, you want to come into our settings and you want to come into game settings. You want to come down to helper buy. So AI workers. Um, and we're going to fly, find slurry and we're going to turn that to pigsty large we'll just turn that off okay so basically it'll use when our worker does the fertilization utilizing the slurry it'll use what's on board in the tank and it won't um, so if you have the helper buy function turned on it'll buy slurry at the market rate and the slurry tanker will remain uh, full whereas this way our slurry will get consumed so you'll see that uh, very shortly so let's get this guy set up now I'm not sure how big the working width is here from memory so let's just start from about here and let's see how we go. So we turn that on and you can see the change in color of the field. If we zoom out a little bit, if I can go this way, that's actually a pretty pretty close. So it's brought our yield up to 58%. Okay, so we're going to go through a fair bit of slurry I think. So that's almost a quarter of a tank. So two passes should do this field. Looks like this guy is just about done with the weeding. Yeah, let's check on this guy again. So this is going to give us a pretty decent yield bonus. So 58%. Obviously the lime is probably another 25 or 15. If remember I can't quite recall. And you have to do that every three harvests if it's turned on. Now it looks like we're going to miss a portion of this because you can't turn around because the turn is too tight. But that is okay. I'm not expecting to get the whole field. Right, how much have we got left here? A little bit left. Nice. And then what I'm going to do is just double check the fertilization on this field. So it's got zero fertilizer. So let's get some slurry on here. And then we can, we can always go on top up. So yeah, once we get more pigs, the slurry will start to increase uh, exponentially. I think we're almost out of here, are we? Yeah, we'll just leave that go. All right, close enough with the weeder. I really want to move on. So a portion of these fields are going to have yield deficits, but that's okay. We just want to get these crops in. So when it does come time to harvest next year, We'll start be able, we'll be able to stockpile some of that some of that food um, in preparation for creating our own pig feed. So let's get this guy dropped off. Gonna move this header trailer because it's always in the way. Okay, cool. Grab our slurry tanker. Now I am expecting to see a bump in leasing costs because obviously we have leased a few new items. All right, let's just double check our crop map. Make sure we've done the right stuff. So wheat and canola is in and it is growing. Okay, cool. So we can sleep, sleep again. All right, cool, 12,000 property income, leasing costs of 500. We have a field of wheat. How come we didn't get the fertilization? Oh yeah, yeah we did. It was just part of the field was missing. Let's go and check the canola. Cool, so we get a good yield out of that, which is pretty good. Okay, let's check the pigs quickly. All right, so you've got another batch on the way. These guys are nearly near their peak price, four more months. Cool, all right, let's go ahead and sleep again. So we're coming into winter. There's not much we can do here. Just let our crops crops grow, our pigs feed, and we'll just keep an eye on them. All right, 11,000 property income, 565 in vehicle leasing costs, so quite economical, which is quite good. Okay, let's check out our, yep, so that's growing. 
Uh, planting season, let's just double check the planting season for sorghum. So sorghum planting season is April. Okay, so we've got plenty of time. Okay, nothing to do. Let's go ahead and sleep. I'll actually quickly check the pigs. So here they're going for feed. Okay, three more months until these guys should hit maximum price. All right, reduce property income from the solar panels coming into winter. So that's to be expected. Okay, we've got another batch of pigs. So they've just dropped off. So that's these guys here. We've got another batch coming in next month. So maybe two more batches. So you can get it, you're going to see our food start to plummet. So obviously these pigs will start to reproduce pretty pretty pretty, pretty rapidly from here. Okay, December. All right, let's sleep. So our crops are growing. Nothing we can do. All right, January. Everything's still growing. Slurry's getting back up there. So two more groups of pigs have just spawned. So we've got these guys and these guys. Okay, 24 months. I've got a feeling like they're going to be max price next month. Uh, where is our next batch? So they're all in puberty, reproduction. So there's still ways to go. All right, skip ahead again. So obviously this is where you use the sleep trigger to get through the months where you can't do anything. Obviously our crops are planted, they're growing. Our pigs are self-sufficient because the feed is sufficient. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could top up the feed each each month. But I want to just cycle through, get to where we need to go. So we're in February here. And they're not consuming that much food, so they're pretty economical. Okay, a couple are coming off of puberty shortly. Another two more months and we'll get a, another batch. Okay, so these guys are at 1200 so I want to monitor the price here. So let's, I want to see if it, if it flicks over to 25 months and they reduce in price, then I'll know 24 is the maximum. I've got a feeling 24 is the maximum. 24 months, that is. So 25 months should confirm it for me. Um, and if it does increase in value, then we'll just keep going until they reach, a, reach their maximum, watch it drop off the following month, and then we'll sell them from there. All right, property income is keep picking up again. Okay, 25 months. Okay, so they haven't gone up in value. They've just stayed the same. So I'm going to do my due diligence and do one more month, just to be sure. But before we do that, we are going to plant some sorghum, I believe. So sorghum is in April, okay? So just double check the pigs. Okay, 25 months, 1,200. 24 months, they were 1,200. So if we go 26 months and they're still 1,200, that's going to be the maximum. So let's do this. Let's hit April. Okay, 13,000 in property income. So we've had a bit of a bump in property income. All right, pigs, 26 months, still no increase in value. Okay, so basically this is now signifies that these guys have reached their maximum value. So they're no longer, they're no longer productive in the sense of making me more money the older they are. The only thing they are going to do is produce more pigs, okay? But I've got enough pigs here to sustain the growth so I can afford to start getting rid of them once they reach that peak sell price. So let's go and sell some. Now I don't have the uh, trailer, which I, mean, I could go and lease. Let's just check out how much it's going to cost me to sell these guys. So these are the ones we want to look at. We want to grab all 13. So it's going to cost me 650 to sell them and provide transport. Which, I mean, let's just, I'm not worried about it right now. So I'm going to sell them for 14950 And there we go, that's our first profit from the pigs. So it's taken us however many months to get there, 26 months. Maybe a little bit longer, but that's our first pig sale. So the next batch to go off is going to be these guys. So they're 833. So how many months away are they? They are about eight months away. Okay, but they're going to probably reproduce another two times. So we're still going to have a we're still going to have a pretty decent bump in our um, numbers from there. All right, what we need to do is I need to get seeding on the sorghum. So hopefully this field is cultivated. So it should be right. All right, let's get this sorghum in. Where are we? Now it shouldn't matter for us because we've got weeds here. This seeding operation should uh, get rid of the weeds for us. But we'll still probably have to hit it with the the weeder afterwards. Yeah, so you can see that there. Weeds growing. They're just not the mature large size weeds. 
All right, let's go and grab a run of pig feed. So where's our Macy? Because it's going to be a while until we get the sorghum up. So we're going to have to rely on the pig feed for a little bit longer until we can start providing our own mix. So we're still we're still sitting pretty good. Okay. Use vehicles. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, cool. Open our work menu. Let's go and grab another load of pig food from the shop. So we're just going to go through our manual loading process like we do. Um, we could... F All right, let's just check in on when our next harvest is going to be. So the wheat's going to go off in July. Same with the canola. So we'll get those both harvested then. And then the sorghum is going to go off in... August and September as well. Okay, so it's going to be a pretty busy time around there. So one thing I'm going to look to do is get a direct drill seed out, I think. So I think that's going to have, that's going to save us on cultivation time. And it's also going to speed up our planting. So for the next wheat, so for the next wheat um, planting, which is coming up in planting season for wheat September I think what we'll do so once we seed this field we're going to go sell our cedar and then we're going to replace it with um, a direct drill and along with that we're probably going to need a bigger tractor so we're going to need something in around the 200 horsepower 200 horsepower mark so if we go into here check out our cedars so we're just going to go one of the either the pottinger yeah we'll go the pottinger for 210 and then we're just going to need a 210 horsepower tractor so we'll probably go one of the Macy's, to be honest. Or if we can modify our... What if we can modify our one of our bigger ones? So 7810's only 178.5. Does it come with a bigger engine? No. The 475 doesn't come with a bigger engine. Yeah, so we'll have a look at that when the time comes. So we can obviously... We're going to return... If we're going to do that, we can return our cultivator. So let's have a look at what we've got leased. So let's get rid of this guy. So it's not going to hit. It's not going to hit us for the leasing cost each day. And what I'm going to do quickly. So I'm going to fill this up, and then I'm going to go check if I can actually update, upgrade the engine on this to suit the 210 horsepower implement. All right, we're all full. Let's go and see if we can't upgrade the engine. So to do that, we just drive over to the workshop, park in the yellow cross hatching area. Hopefully that's close enough. Come into customize and see if we can add an engine upgrade, which we can't because if the engine upgrade was there. Uh, we'd be able to select it, which we cannot. So let's just get this guy back to the farm and drop this wheat, uh, drop this pig feed off. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to go and sell this uh, 190 horsepower tractor. So we're going to upgrade this tractor to a a least. Probably uh, I reckon we'll go. Let's just send this guy down on a worker actually. Somewhere in and around that 250 horsepower mark. Oh, what I'm going to quickly do here is just get this headland row done. Have I turned the cedar on? No, I haven't. All right, let's try this again because we do have a bit of a cash flow here so this is this is a good time to do this and we don't have to we won't have to persevere with such small working widths okay cool let's get this guy hopefully it doesn't drive on the crop because we've still got crop destruction turned on so we want to make sure that we don't ruin our hard work all right let's get this guy sold so we should still get a decent amount of money for this i reckon somewhere probably in the order of sixty thousand. so we'll soon find out 76 so pretty good so if you come if you drive it to the shop you actually get more for it so let's get this guy sold let's get that sold all right let's have a look at okay what we might want to use in the future as well so i'm thinking if we go the cedar we were talking about so we got the 210 horsepower option so if we go a a fent 246 What's the least on that going to be? So it's going to be base cost of 4,000 per work, work day, 2,000. So pretty high. Let's go, at, let's go at 120. What have we got? Something a little bit cheaper, perhaps. That's 145. This guy will be 210. So per day, 1680. Per work hour, 3,502. I think, I think that's going to be the go. So let's lease that guy. So 210 horsepower. And that is him here. Also, this is going to be for our new cedar. Great. Okay, we're all done. So let's send this guy down to the shop in preparation for... All right, let's just double check where we're up to. So wheat is in and growing. 
sorghum is in and growing. I think that actually needs weeding, so let's do that. So we'll get in and do the weeding now while we can. So I'm just going to whip down to the other end, do a headland, and then that'll make turning around next to the solar panels just that little bit easier. Okay, so we should have weeds growing. So we still need lime, so we'll sort that out in the next rotation. Okay, weeds are gone. Great. Okay, this guy here, let's go drop off this cedar. Oh, one thing we are going to do is drop the seed out. So, unload. So that pops out our seed. Just so we don't have to waste waste the seed. Okay, I'll drop that off into the area. Now, I don't know what this is worth. I don't think it's going to be that much. 21,000, so that's not too bad. So let's sell that. Cool. Getting our cash back up nicely. And we could probably send this guy back to the farm, so let's do that. Alright, send this guy off on a worker going this way. So that'll sort out our weeding up and down. Cool, so we've got weeding the weeds present over here. We do not. Awesome. Now we could probably throw some slurry in on this field as well. Which I think I will do with this guy. So once we get back to the farm, we'll connect the slurry tanker. We'll chuck some slurry on the newly seeded sorghum. That'll give us a yield bonus. 58% yield bonus there. Okay, cool. Let's assume control. Head on over to our slurry tank. Now we should get one, maybe, oh, we'll get two passes in, I reckon, on that. Oh, let's not get any hours on that currently. I mean, realistically, I should have probably bought that tractor. I should, should have leased that tractor. Um, not this month, but should have leased it in September just to save on the per day leasing costs. But I've already got, I've got it now, so we'll just hang on to it. All right, let's wait for this weirdo to do his thing, and then we'll skip through to the next day. All right, this guy is done, so I think we can move to the next day. So let's just get everybody in position. Oh no, we are going to throw some slurry down, so let's do that quickly. So we'll just get two, I reckon we'll get two passes in. Make sure we don't drive on the crop. So not too worried if we don't get the whole field. If we get most of it, I'll be happy with that. Cool, 80% yield bonus. Pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in this guy. And I'm just going to do this little section myself. Now you can do double ap application rate of slurry. Basically give it a double fertilization, which I'm not going to worry about here. But you can do that if you want to. Alright, I'm going to have to just swing around here. Turn that off. Is that off? Yep. Alright, let's go park this up. And then we are going to go and sleep. So I'll just double check that we've got nothing else that we need to do. And then we'll move on into the next month. So our sorghum is planted, weeded, fertilized. Okay, let's just double check. Okay, so that's all growing. Beautiful. Uh, harvesting season's coming up for the wheat and the canola. Pigs got plenty of food. We've got a few more reproductions about to go off. So that's going to give us another bump in numbers. Uh, we've also sold our first batch. I think it was last month. So let's go ahead and sleep. Right, 14,000 in property income, 2,000 in leasing costs, so we're well and truly covered there. Looking good. Let's check out the sheep. And not the sheep, the pigs. So 24 months is the magic number for best price. Okay, we've got another group about to go off next month. Cool. And a couple about ready to come off of puberty. So let's go and sleep until July. All right, nice, 15,000. So we're getting our money up there, which I'm pretty happy about. Okay, harvesting season, wheat and bar, wheat and canola next month. Pigs, so we've got another batch of pigs. Got a couple coming off of puberty, quarter of the way through. Uh, still okay on the feed, so let's go and sleep again. This will bring us into July, so this should be peak season for harvesting, so we'll get that underway. Now I'm expecting to see a high yield uh, this year because we've done the weeding and we've done some fertilization. All right, happy days. Now what we can do as well is we can bale this straw. So I think what I'll do is I'm not gonna bale it this time because we can give it to the pigs for manure, but we haven't got a manure heap. So I'm not gonna worry about this cycle. Probably something we'll look at maybe next year. Cool. 
So sorghum is still going. Canola is going to be next month, I think. No, it's saying, it's saying next month. So we'll let that we'll let that go. Cool. Should get a good yield on our sorghum. Now the canola doesn't look like it's gone to that ready to harvest colour. So let's just double check it. Okay, so it's going to need one more month, which is fine. All right, let us go and just double check our pig feed. So I reckon I might do a run of pig feed while we are waiting. So we've got four more months there. Yeah, let's do a run of pig feed. And then we'll check in on how we're yielding uh, for this year's wheat. Okay, so this guy is going to be planting next month. So we'll grab that seed in next month. Oh, it's actually going to be September, but anyway. Okay, definitely getting more wheat this time, which is pretty good. Um, now, yeah, just double check the pigs. So we've got a few, yeah, we've got a few on the go, which is good. I'm happy about that. Okay, this guy, we'll get him filled up. Now it is a bit silly to pay for a lease on a tractor that we're not using. So don't do what I did. If you're going to lease a tractor, lease it closer to the time that you're going to actually use it. Because it's going to sit there and cost you money. Okay, let's grab pig feed. So I'll grab probably three batches. Right, let's get back to the farm, drop this wheat off. Okay, still not the, still not the highest yield, but I think we got 1800 litres last time. So that's about well and truly double. So that's just through, that's just through weeding and some fertilization. So it's actually pretty good going. All right, so we'll let this guy do his thing and then we'll come back in once this is completed. Actually, what we can do is we can sleep now because this is not going to impact our um, harvesting because we could still harvest in August. It'll just mean that our canola will be ready to go straight away. Four more months for this group of pigs to go off and then they're going to be sold. And we've got a few more in the pipeline. Cool, our feed's getting up there. Slurry is definitely getting up there, which is good. Okay, let's get this pig feed on. Let's get this pig feed delivered. Oh, it looks like our sorghum's ready too. This is good. So it looks like August is going to be harvesting month, which is good to know. And that canola can get planted as well. So we are going to get straight onto that. So once this is done... Okay, so this is this guy is going to get put to work. So we are going to go and grab that cedar we talked about. So the direct drill. So this one doesn't need cultivation. So it's the Pottinger Terrasem. Let's go ahead and lease that. Okay, there it is right there. Awesome bit of gear. So we need to throw some seed in there. Now this thing also has fertilizer. So I'm going to buy a pallet of fertilizer. Now, I think I've got the helper buy turned on for seeds and fertilizer currently, so that's why I'm just going the one, one pallet of each. So it just means the worker is going to buy the seed from the shop and the fertilizer from the shop at the same time. So you can see we've leveled up our efficiency pretty much straight away here, so we've got a bigger tractor towing a bigger implement with a bigger working width. We've got um, fertilization and seed happening and cultivation happening all in one, all in the one step. So if we go to canola, so we can throw the canola into the wheat field. And then once we get the canola up, we'll throw the wheat into a different field. And we'll go from there. So let's get this guy over. Now we're still going to have to run the weeder over, but that's not a problem. Oop, don't fall in there. Okay. Okay, canola is going in. Cool, 50% fertilized. So we're going to throw some slurry on top of that. And then we'll be all good. Okay, let's go. So what do we get? 4,792. Which is not a bad result, actually. So now what we've, what we've done is, effectively, we've laid the foundation for our own pig feed supply. So what I'm going to do, this will probably be the last batch. Well, I'll let the pig feed that I've got in store, so in there currently, I'll let that doodle down to almost nothing over the next 12 months. And then we'll utilize our own crops to supplement the feed, so that's going to be the next step. All right, let's go get this canola, and then we'll come back for the sorghum. All right, let's go and run over the newly planted field 45 with the weeder. So obviously that's required because we're using the direct drill. We're still going to get some weeds, so let's get that sorted. And we've got our harvester running in field 49 currently as well, so 
Okay, how we traveling? Cool. So next year's crop is already going in, which is great. And the sorghum is ready. So it's handy that everything is ready all around the same time. Just means we're gonna have to wait till September to plant the uh, wheat. Uh, canola can go in today, and the sorghum is gonna have to go in in April, which is okay. All right, this guy's yielding pretty well. This guy's getting through it nicely also. All right, let's grab some more pig feed. All right, let's head back to the farm, get this unloaded. Okay, seeding is complete. So let's head over to field. No, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to complete field 49. Let's have a quick look at what's in field 47. So field 47 has got sunflowers, so we can direct drill into that. Now we need to. So we're actually, we're probably going to put some wheat in there, I think. So just double check that we've got canola in field. Yep, so we'll keep the sorghum there because they're going to have to replant that in April so that can be our sorghum field. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and buy. So let's go to our menu, land menu, push L3, R3. So let's go and buy this land, field land plot number four. And then we're going to go direct drill some wheat into that field. So we've got sunflowers on there at the moment, but we don't have sunflower harvesting capabilities. So we're just going to utilize this land for a new wheat field and we're going to sell um, field 49 because it's a bit of an odd shape and it's hard to work. And this uh, this field's actually comparable for it can't be planted in August. Okay, so we're going to wait till tomorrow, September. Cool, that's fine. All right, how's this guy traveling? I'm going to take over the worker, get this last little bit up. Cool, so not a bad get. So let's drop this off and then we'll sell field 49. Uh, then we will harvest the sorghum. So I think we've got, I think we might have August and September to, to do the, to harvest the sorghum. But I just want to double check because obviously if I go over it, then we're kind of screwed. But if we do have another day up our sleeve, I am going to move forward. Okay, just make sure that's going to unload. Uh, harvesting season for the sorghum is August and September. Okay, so we can't sleep. So our weeder is just about done. So I'll wait for him to complete that run. Just so we don't have any larger weeds grow. Cool, job done. All right, time to sleep. So this means our wheat can go in, our sorghum can be harvested, and then we're pretty much all set until next year's harvest. All right, cool. Let's get this wheat underway. Okay, so we're going to get wheat in here. Just double check that's that's actually what's happening. So wheat growing, so we're going to get a full yield boost because we're plowing in a, a, a crop. <coughs> let's run this guy over to the sorghum let's get that up all right let's drop this off all right let's get our weeder in position for our wheat so our newly planted wheat so we and we've got to sell field 49 so let's go ahead and do that as well so before we forget, before we forget cool so that brings us back up to 294 Double check our pigs, just to make sure. Okay, so they're starting to increase in number pretty rapidly now. So we've got another batch to go off next month. Another batch, so two batches. Uh, and these, have got, these guys have got three more months until they have hit the uh, pig price. And we've got plenty of slurry there for fertilization. So I'm pretty sure this is fully fertilized. So I think our canola could probably do with the fertilization. So let's go quickly check. So it is 50% fertilized. So that was from the onboard fertilization from the cedar. So we can run over this with some slurry and we shouldn't get a crop, crop destruction penalty at this stage. Um, so we'll just check that, but, and then our canola, uh, our sorghum will be completed shortly. 
and then we can put that back in in April and then harvest in September again so pretty quick turnaround. Alright let's get cracking with this weeding. Our sorghum harvest is just about done. We've got our wheat going in so we nearly newly purchased field 47 and just double check we've got everything here yes we do field 46 we will wait until april and then we're going to dump, uh, dump some sorghum in there so let's go get this unloaded and let's check our stock of crops at the moment so we've got 12,000 wheat 6,000 canola and probably two two and a bit thousand liters of sorghum 3,000 litres of sorghum. So that's going to give us three ingredients to make our pig feed. So if we just go and check on the pigs. So we're starting to grow in number pretty pretty effectively now. Now what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to let this food run out and then I'm going to um, showcase what it what it takes to feed them manually and the differences that the differences in the pitfalls that come with that because there's a couple of things you really need to know that I cover in my beginner guide in a lot more depth but I just want to touch on them here because we're at that stage now where we're going to transition away from buying the pig food pre-made to providing the individual ingredients except for the root crops in this case so what I'm going to do is wait for these guys to do their jobs and then we'll skip through until we run out of food obviously uh, we're going to have some crops growing so we're going to have our wheat here, we have got canola in 45 and then we're going to have another batch of sorghum in April when the time comes. So I'm going to skip ahead time and then we'll come back in once we're ready to move on. Alright that's the field prep all done so let's go ahead and sleep, get these crops growing, uh, purchase two more batches of pigs just to help get our pig feed down. Um, and now we're going to get, uh, so we'll just have a quick look before we move on. So we've got 230 pigs, I think, in total. Where are we? 234. So we're going to hold 270, so we've still got room for um, offspring. But we're going to have a, quite a few come off. We're going to have quite a few get to that 24 month, 24 month age. And then be able to be sold for 1200, so we're going to have some some cash inflows very very quickly so now I want to get this food this pig food out of the barn so 8,000 property income okay so the food is dropping off two more months and these guys will be ready to go uh, six months and these guys will be ready to go and we've got yeah plenty on the go all right jump into the build mode quickly so canola is growing sorghum we're going to replant in April and our wheat should have sprouted, which it has. Cool, so there's nothing for us to do, so let's cruise on and sleep through the winter. I'm just going to monitor the pigs, pigs periodically just to make sure that food is depleting. So I want to get that down as low as possible. So we can then showcase the feeding regime using our own grown crops. Okay, so you can see there our pig numbers are getting up there. Now it doesn't give us a total in this menu, which is a bit annoying. So we've got to go over to the actual be uh, the actual barn to see what the actual number is. So we're maxed out 270. So we do need to sell some of these guys. So these guys here, these 13, are going to be the next to go. So let's go and sleep. Now what we could do here is if we've got, if we wanted to, we could place down a separate another barn and grow out our pig numbers. So keeping in mind, we've only bought initially one batch of 13 and I've just put in two more batches of 13 to help fill the pen to get that feed down but theoretically we don't need to buy any more sheep I mean any more pigs we can just start taking pigs from this barn and put them into a new barn and then start growing out the next lot of pigs okay so these guys are ready to sell so let's go and do that pig feeds pretty low which is also good so I'm going to let them get down to no food whatsoever just to show you what happens it's not um it's not at the end of the world because all we have to do is just refeed them that the pigs don't die or you don't lose any okay let's sell these guys so it's going to be 15 grand 14.950 so let's grab those sell okay all right nothing ready to sell so we've just freed up a bit of room 
Okay, so we've probably got a, I reckon maybe less than six months worth, six months worth of food, which is ideal because I want to do the manual mixing. So let's go ahead and sleep again. We'll get through the winter and we'll come back in. All right, so probably got one more day's worth of feed there. Let's check on, yep, these guys are coming up to, to be sold. Nothing else we can do in January. We've got a bit of snow, crops are still growing. So we should be out of food now, would be my anticipation. Okay, out of food. Now, this is this is not an ideal scenario if we, if we were doing this for real. But as you can see, the prices of the pigs have dropped. All the food is gone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our feed in our silo to start building out the base food grain and protein. So our base food is going to be sorghum. So let's go and grab a load of sorghum. So we've got our grain silo storage. Now I'm just going to put, a, put in a thousand litres of, of sorghum to begin with. Okay, even though that was 3,000. Because the other thing too is you don't want to overfill, and we're not going to because we've got such such low quantities of, of feed. So I'm going to just going to pop in about a thousand litres of sorghum. So a thousand litres of base food, okay. And I want to see what happens when we sleep to that food. So we can see that in there, base food, 1360. Now I want to see how that brings up their productivity or what is likely to happen. So I've got a, in my beginner's, to, beginner's guide to pigs, I've got a little bit more robust in-depth testing for this. But I just want to touch on it here just to sort of, sort of showcase um, the issue. So I've got a feeling they're going to eat all this sorghum, if I'm honest, because there's so many of them. Yeah. So it's going to be very hard to test with such large numbers of pigs. So let's go and... It's going to fill up with all three food types. So this is the other challenge with pigs, right? Because if you're going to grow, if you're going to grow your own crops, um, and if your pigs do become quite large in volume, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with the demand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all, all the sorghum that we own. I'm going to put in all the wheat that we own, and then all the canola. Now did that even bring up their productivity a little bit? So it didn't even bring up their health at all. Okay. All right, let's grab the wheat. So you can see it's taken us quite a while to get to this point to even just have 12,000 liters of wheat. And our pigs are so hungry that to sustain them is very, very challenging. So we actually need significant land and significant yield. But there are, there are ways that you can, obviously you can still buy pig food. That would be the best scenario. Okay, so here we go. So the grain's going in. Base food's quite low. Okay, and let's grab a load of canola and see if we can't sustain these pigs for one day. All right, here we are with the canola. Let's get that dropped off. Then we'll go and sleep and see how much, see how we can still sustain the pigs with our own feed. So this is our protein going in. So this is 20% effectiveness. So you can see that there. Okay, so that's only 4,000 liters. So for all our harvesting efforts over the last, so let's say two years, that's that's all the grain that we've been able to, to produce to sustain the pigs. So it's going to be a long time before we can sustain pigs with our own farming operation. So let's go and sleep and see what our feed levels are like. All right, let's have a look. So all the base food's been consumed. Uh, we've still got some grain left over. We've still got some protein left over. And you can see our health and reproduct reproduction is still low as okay so basically if you don't have all the required feed types which i've just demonstrated you're not going to have healthy pigs so let's go and sleep again now i know i've just missed the sorghum planting window but for the purposes of the tutorial we're up to that stage now where we're going to try and sustain the pigs with our feed now we could sustain them if we had less pigs but if we had less pigs we'd be, we'd be making less money so it wouldn't be as viable as a strategy so let's see what happens here so they've consumed all the food just about their health is still shot they're no good okay so it's a really it's really the scenario where if you are going to have pigs you really need to make sure you feed them pig feed or ensure that you've got all the feed types in order to feed them accurately now one thing that i do recommend and use for pig farming is this mod which i'm about to show you so the multi fruit buy station which is this guy here so this will give you any product in the game at a very low cost okay 
Now, if you don't want to use that, there's the pig feed buying station, which is this this guy just here. So what I do is I recommend you place it pretty much quite right on close to your where your pig farm is. Now, instead of basically having to drive to the shop, which we have been, to get our pig feed, we can purchase the pig feed on in bulk at a lower rate. So obviously it was a uh, thousand dollars per 1,000 liters. So that's 3,763 for 8,000 liters. So it is a bit cheaper, but we can basically cut down our transit time, not have to load the pallets up manually, and we're still paying for the pig food. Um, another option is to buy a pig food making factory. So if we come into factories, so I've got a whole bunch of factories here. I've just got to find where it is. So we've got feed mixing plants XXL mod. So this is the compound pig feed mod. So this building here, basically if I bring in the raw inputs of wheat, potato, canola, and corn, it'll make pig food, okay? So if you wanted to still retain the simulation of farming the crops to create the pig food, there's mods that allow you to, to do that. Okay, I'm not gonna place that down because I do have another one that we can have a look at. So here's another one, pig food production. So this will take sugar beet, potato, and soybeans, okay? And this will generate and create pig food, okay? So still, if you wanted to do the farming aspect, and if you feel like just buying the pig food directly was too easy, you can still create pig food through that uh, setup. Now, I believe I do have another one. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't have another one installed, but there are ones on the downloadable content section in the mod hub. So you can search for them online from the Farm Simulator website and it'll tell you whether it's on PS5, console or PC only, okay? But they're just two, they're just a couple of different ways. So what I'm going to do now is, well, I won't do it now, but you get the idea. We're basically just going to use this pig food um, filling machine to sustain our pigs. So if we have a look, we've filled back up all the required feed types. So if I do two loads actually, and then if we sleep, so this trailer's a little bit finicky to reverse, so I'm just going to loop around. So there we go, pig food, purchased it, so we're still buying it. We're going to watch our feed quantity increase, so you can see that coming up there. Now we should be able to sleep again, and we should hopefully not run out of food, and the pro productivity of our pigs should shoot right back up. Okay, cool, so here we are, still making money from our solar panels. So the pigs have consumed all the food, just a bit, so there's 173 litres left. And you can see that the productivity has come right back up and the health has come right back up, okay? So we see we've got a couple of pigs there to sell. So we're gonna go sell them. So if we jump in here, find the ones for $1,200, sell them. So we've got a couple more here we can sell for close to best price. So I'm just gonna sell them now just to make some room. So we'll sell those guys, sell those guys. And that brings our numbers down. So then we can start reproducing. And you can see we're starting to make a little bit of money out of the pigs. Now, that pretty much brings us to the end of our setting up of a pig farm tutorial. So you can sort of see that it's a little bit of a slow burn, all right? It's a little bit challenging having to, to provide your own feed, okay? So I think if the strategy is if you, if you buy the food like we were from the shop, you're still gonna make money from the pigs. You are gonna get slurry, which we, you can use as fertilization. And you are going to have a consistent, reliable income source because the, the price of the pigs doesn't change based on the time of year um, like the crops do. So it's a steady, reliable income. And you can basically just keep, as you get a batch of 24-month-old pigs for 1200 bucks, you can sell them, make room in your pen, and you just keep rinse and repeat over and over and over. The only laborious part is having to cart the pig feed from the shop. So having a mod like this definitely really helps. Or if you can, or if you have significant uh, land and significant crops, you can sustain your pig operation from your own farming efforts, which you know would be the view, which which would what which um, which is what you would want to do in the long run to save on the pig feed. Okay. But pretty much, so that's pretty much how I would start a pig farm in Farming Simulator 22. And now the question is, what can you do from here? So what, what what's your options to springboard into the next um, next phase of, of growth? 
So obviously we're doing arable farming, so we're farming crops. So you, can, you would continue to do that, continue to build out your land, keep feeding the pigs, get your slurry up. You would definitely utilize the fertilization of the slurry a lot more than I have, okay, to fertilize your fields. Um, you can also use that fertilizer for contracts, okay, so fertilization contracts. Um, you would possibly look to increase the amount of pigs that you have. So you could buy another another pig barn. So in this case, we've got the small version here. The only downside to that is we need some land to put it on. Now we don't really have anywhere kind of practical at the moment. I mean, possibly in this sort of area. Okay. Now, if you wanted to go down the mod route, you could buy a modified barn. So we've got a huge one here that will hold 1,200 pigs. Okay. Change the color, etc. But if you want to use base game equipment, the biggest you can get is 270. Okay. And really, that's it's because pig farming is a little bit one-dimensional. All right, but it is it is slow, reliable consistent income and it really pays it pays for itself in the late game not so much the early to mid game so we're probably about three years in and about three hours in to this this gameplay session so relatively quickly we can get a profitable pig enterprise happening uh, we do still have our loan um, which we've talked about we're well on our way to sort of building out the pig farm and sort of make it and building off from there so you can really take it in any direction you really like from here but it's up to you. So there you have it guys, my guide to starting a pig farm in Farming Simulator 22. So as you can see, it's a bit of a slow burn. The pigs are a bit of a tougher animal to look after. So they're very demanding in high numbers. They take a lot of food um, and they can be quite expensive to buy the pig food. And as for reasons we've already discussed, if you don't have the right mix of food, you won't get the productivity out of them, the reproduction, the health, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but it is doable in new farmer mode as we've demonstrated and you can really springboard from here into your own um, farming enterprise so you can increase increase the number of pigs you've got overall by adding additional barns you can increase the amount of arable crops you're farming some more grain crops and you can add additional animals um, and other such things so so thanks very much for watching guys don't forget to like the video comment leave it if you've got any questions um, share the video if you like it and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.